Uh, hello, this is a note on using XY Grib to view ocean waves, sea state, waves and swells. And um, so we'll use uh, XY Grib and we'll compare with the, or show. It's just these are all videos showing how to use these programs um, and not so much the science of what we're looking at for the moment, but just really what the, what the programs look like and how you can do download different things. So this program has uh, two different global wave models. One is the WW3. And uh, and so here's here's this. I've already downloaded these to save a little time. So I'm just choosing this region, something like this, and then I'm going to the globe, and then this model I had is WW3. So I go here and get WW3, and for now I'm not looking at wind or anything. I'm just looking at the at the uh, so there's no wind definitely no altitude data I'm just looking at wave data and there's these three parameters and we'll discuss more about that there's it's a lot more information in a sense than just these three numbers but that's where we start and that's the resolution oh that doesn't matter that's atmospheric model you see whatever's here is not going to matter because I didn't choose anything from the atmosphere just the waves it's going to be here and I'm going to do the interval one hour and let's look at say two days run the latest and that's it and then I download and I'm not gonna download it now because it would just overload this file and then this is a file that shows up for WW3 and then in a moment we'll compare it to something else but let's just look at how this is presented these arrows are the direction of something look down here we've got this panel on the side and notice there's nothing else filling in here because we have no other parameters. And these are all sitting here blank. If you want to, you can right click this and turn on and off what you want. But I've got them all showing. But what we're looking at is the stuff down here, the waves. And you see, um, if I go here, oh, I'm going to have to have that a little bit bigger to get the hand. Um, this area down here let's just look down in here see I've got this I can just like make a range and just kind of look in this area here and you see even though uh, 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 and so let me uh, actually let me back up what am I showing here first of all the color overlay is defined up here in this weather map that is the um, uh, that is, uh, let's see, oh no, I'm C state, C state. So it's the significant wave height that's being shown here in color. Now, we don't know exactly what significant wave height that is uh, in, this, in, the, in this program because there are actually, in this data, three significant wave heights. There is a, and, and we notice over here that I have, um, if I look, see, look over here on the left as I go here. So you see going down the left column, I see I've got a significant wave height 1.27M, then I've got one at 0.83M and one at 0.62M. So one is a significant wave height. That means the average height of the highest one-third of all the waves, and that's, uh, and that's what it is for the wind waves. Now that's also the definition of the swells, but that's a little bit more nebulous unless there's more than one swell running because swells are almost always the same height, more or less the same height. So it doesn't have much meaning. But the top significant wave height is, a, is the uh, sum, is the square root of the, it's the combined vector sum of the swell and the wind waves. Uh, keeping in mind that they can, one could be up when the other's down. So they add like the square root. So I'm having to guess here that 1.39 is roughly equal to the square root of 0.82 squared plus 0.7 squared. Square root of that sum. I, I should have done it, but I'm not now. Anyway, that's what that is. And when they say that the color code up here on the C is tied to significant wave height, we don't know which of those three it is. Most likely, it's the, um, it's the um, combined Cs, I would guess. 
Um, you, we maybe could piece that together because here's a color bar for it. Anyway, that's that right now. And then the arrows that are being shown are, if I go up to C, these are wind arrows in there for the swell. And you see, what's it say over here? The swell is from 299 to, yeah, you see on the left there. And that's right. You see, that's 299. The swells, a westerly swell is coming from the west. That's here, like that. Okay. And now if I turn on the wind waves, I come up here, wave arrows, I turn on the wind waves. Now, this is a, this is a definitely a cross seas situation here. You've got the wind waves coming, you know, from the northeast. And what do they say there? See, 41, 37, 38. So these are the wind waves here, like this. All right, so that's the way you read that, and then you can play with that. If I want to know what time this is, I would click down here. Yeah, I want, for this comparison, that's 2, 3, February 3rd, 3, 3 a.m. Okay, and then I've got these values. And you, Okay, so now what I want to do is compare this with uh, this is the uh, WWV3. Now let's compare it with uh, German data. Um, German data. And so the way you would do that, well, okay, so in this case, the only way to see two files here at the same time is really go over here then and say file new instance. And that will just open up another whole copy of the program. And so that open that identi that makes identical copy. So then I would go in here and get my range that I'm after. Now I'm going to go up here, and this time I want to get the waves from the. This is the D Deutsche Wetterdienst uh, global uh, global wave model. Global wave model from the uh, uh, DWD. Okay, so that's there, and again, that's a resolution of it. It's every hour. Every two days, we'll get two days and take the last one. And again, all we're taking is the wave data, same, same. Okay, and then we hit download. Okay, but I'm not going to download that because I already have. And But now, how do I go and look at something I've already loaded? You go up here to this folder, and that will take you to where you're storing the data. And then I want now the uh, the global weather, uh, this one, GW, the German one. Okay, so I open that one. All right. So now, and now let me check my time again. See, you've got the time up here. It's pretty, it's pretty small to read. And you got the time down here pretty small to read. But I can click this thing, and it brings up, okay, that's not what I want. Uh, I want, uh, there's what I want. I want it to be the same. Now I want to come in here and uh, bring these up. So now we've got this like this. And now where is this one? Oh, okay. So let's bring this guy up. Let's get these two, let's get these two about the same size. That looks about the same size. Okay. Now, what are we looking at here? Here we're looking at the wind waves. Here we're looking at the wind waves. Okay, so now what do we got? And I'm going to, well, let me just go. Okay, so I want to get the scale about, about the same. And that looks about the same. You know, I could, this could be done a lot more precisely. But okay, so that's good enough. And we have the same time. Let me click this. That's 3-3. Three, three. And this down here is 3-3. Um, three, three. Now, uh, okay, so now we're prepared to start studying what is, a, this is two different forecasts for exactly the same thing. And I want to show, let me just see where I can do that. Well, let me just show you without going into details of how this works here, but this is a free program called Panoply. Panoply, we have videos on how you use Panoply and uh, in, the, in our uh, list of videos. And here I just dropped both of those files into Panoply. There's the one for the WW3 and there's the one for the DITA German one. And if you look at that, you see it's got the same parameters. Now these guys actually have different abbreviations in the, you know, in the code, but the actual parameters are exactly the same. Okay, so the data in these two samples that I just downloaded. Now, the, the government could offer different things, but from, from, um, from um, 
XY, uh, XY grip, these are the identical parameters in both cases. Okay, so now let's just see what they've got here. So I'm just going to kind of look in this area for the wind waves. Now, okay, I already see something of interest. You see here it says, if I'm just looking in this general area here, I've got swells of about 2.4 meters, 2.4 meters, and wind waves of about 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 meters. So low waves mostly swell. And then uh, you've got the directions 305 and 41, that's right. Also notice the swell period is about 13 seconds. That's, that is a typical, if not the average, swell direction. Three seconds is very short for a typical ocean wave, but that means it's just, it's, it's just light. It's very light, 0.3 meters. That's one foot. Uh, one foot waves. Okay, but look at this swell. The swell is forecast at 0.24 meters. Now if you go up here and look at this one now, you see here we have we have different numbers. We have here they say the swell is 0.82 meters and 0.77 meters. Same time, same place, different models have different values. And then there's other things you can look at. I just did this for one quick comparison. Also notice that they have different, uh, different levels of coverage here uh, on the data. You know, on the data. Here it looks like there's some kind of shadows in place. Uh, here it looks like here it looks like it may be wrapping around. We may be seeing a little effect of the islands and so forth. So it could be that uh, this one has got a little more precision to it. But that's what you have to study and then you have to maybe look at. The ideal way to do this is you find a place where there's a buoy that's measuring wave heights. Right? And then you take both these global models and look at the forecast right at the place where there's a buoy or two measuring wave heights. And then you compare what the wave heights, what the real measurements are, with what these models say. So that's how you can use this, uh, this data, wave data, in uh, this free program XY GRIP. Very a nice presentation. Uh, later we'll show the same data in a different program.